what's up guys this uh what's up guys war here welcome back to the channel so today blizzard um they posted a end game or into the inside the game into the end game uh discussion that they did it's a quick video so we're going to check this out and just kind of see what's uh what's going to be new coming to the end game of diablo 4 and just maybe some hints maybe they'll give us some really cool stuff um Andrea, welcome to the stream. So yeah, guys, we, uh, we're we going to check this out and just see how it goes. So let me turn this up. We're going to react, and then we'll talk about it after. Really excited about getting this game into players' hands and letting them experience this massive world. A main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance through the story and into the end game, they'll unlock a ton of brand new activities that provide meaningful progression, no matter their play style. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences players can pursue. We're going to have an entire world of Sanctuary for our players to offer. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. After the player has okay, finished the campaign, I like that. I like there's a lot that. more game to go and participate in. They gain access to a special, what we call a capstone dungeon that they have to complete. A, cap when a capstone dungeon. So once we beat the story, we get to do a capstone dungeon. Once they're able to finish this capstone dungeon, they're going to gain access to the first world tier. As you complete the world tier, it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. That involves unlocking powerful loot. Oh, okay. So this is what they're doing. So, so you have to... New we're, items we'll talk about and more advantages we'll for your player it. to have a better opportunity in game. I kind of like Whether that. Whether you're though. a fan of dungeons, PvP, or just roaming around the world, there's a way to continue your Diablo adventure long after hitting max level. Yeah, I'm curious what they're going to do for PvP. Growing your power. As your character power. continues to grow in power, you'll start with the skill tree and expand out into skill the Paragon really system. Good. I love the a lot tree. of the choices the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon Whoa. board is a place where we like so this is the Paragon board? Yo, this is the Paragon board? Wait, what? This is the Paragon board, guys. This is the Paragon board? One of them? I have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, many Holy more options. Holy crap, there. look at that thing. You can rotate the board, so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength oh, that's cool. things. Right? I want these particular boons or glyphs. Oh, you can chart okay. your path through it, and they're really a way for you to keep expanding your character and making Holy it unique crap. for yours. Similar to the Paragon boards is the Codex of Power. Okay, the Paragon board is sweet, chat. Paragon board is sweet. It's an in-game system that holds the aspects. We already know about aspects. We know about you aspects. are able to complete a dungeon, and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick up. Well, it's not what a this chance allows you players get it, to do but... is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into legendary yeah, we items. We kind of know. We know it's really how aspects special work, to guys. discover what kind of playstyle really means the most. So to this you. isn't necessarily new. Ooh, nightmare dungeons. Every part of Sanctuary okay. is fulfilling and satisfying. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. They'll enter the dungeon with a found sigil that alters the playstyle and the intensity of the dungeon. They're more difficult and they have additional objectives oh, and like then that. they also have affixes which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. Ooh! Oh! So, Daniel said, the, like, the Blizzard's take on PoE tree. Yeah, the Paragon tree is awesome. We're going to talk about it. But, so, the Nightmare Dungeons are going to have affixes similar to, uh, like, Last Epoch when we're doing the Echoes. Like, where monsters get, like, increased damage or something. Ooh, I like that for Nightmare Dungeons. One of my favorite affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons. You know, as opposed to just, like, when you're doing higher level... Uh, like, you're just doing higher level greater rifts. The only things that actually increase is just monster health and monster damage. There's no other changes. So, that's interesting. Dungeons are actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these Hellgate. portals will open up throughout the area that will just pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to okay. also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. Oh, that's cool. There's over 120 dungeons to play through and find in Diablo. All right, there it is. There it is. Confirm, chat. Confirmed 120 dungeons in Diablo 4. 120. Holy crap. That's four, a lot. And any one of them can become a nightmare dungeon. 
by finding a nightmare sigil and then using it to activate the nightmare version of that dungeon space. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on your particular dungeon. I like that. End game exploration, here we go. There's some targeted activities in Diablo 4 that suit what you're feeling in the mood for. The Force of Hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience. And as the players works. are going into Helltide areas, they're gonna find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards are available at these caches that are found literally throughout Helltide areas. The sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky. I love how it looks. And the monsters get love harder. We really want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead, which you get from the Tree of Whispers. Ooh, the Tree, tree of Whispers, Whispers is grim and a little Book gruesome, dead, but it's up. also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players, and it would like for them to go serve its needs. So you're going to go serve these bounties, gather different rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes okay. that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you're oh, going to go that's cool. to the Fractured Peaks and take... Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. You see that? So you're going to be able to turn these in and then get a collection of whatever, whatever the rewards are. That's really cool. And you can just do these out in the world. Like, that's, that's actually Maybe really you're going nice. to go to the Fractured Peaks and take out some werewolves that are rampaging in a town. They're contained activities that you can do alone or in a group. We really wanted to create variety for people to be able to spend time where they wanted to in the world. It's very cool like the way that. it's been put together, and I can't wait for people to see it, to be honest. Okay, so wait, wait. Let, let's back up on that. Let's back up on that real quick. Because he talked about getting crystals from completing those things that turn in. Fields of hatred. In Diablo 4, we have a focus on the world of Sanctuary. And there are parts of that world that we call the Fields of Hatred, where Lilith's presence in Sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the world. I like that. When players go to these regions, they get to engage in player versus player conflict. Ooh, these PvP! These offer opportunities PvP, for the Jack. player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. Other players PvP. will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your shards, so you'd better be prepared to fight if you're going to be playing any PvP, and be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take these, go back to nearby towns to sell them, and then use that to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. Ooh. It's a place for people who really love PvP and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can. Okay launch is just the beginning. One of the things we're really focused on is creating a living, breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live. It's really just going to be a way to PvP keep coming back awesome. and experiencing more Diablo 4 in fresh ways. We're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all. Oh, look at the world boss. Oh, that world boss looks awesome. All right. Yo, guys. Okay, let's talk about a few things. World tree thing, awesome. Love this. Other missions where you get to go and just turn in, you get a collection of stuff. Now, the question is, is how rare are these items going to be? That's going to be one question, but I really like that for just doing side missions. That's really, really cool. Big win there. The Fields of Hatred, I actually really like for PvP. So you're able to do the Fields of Hatred and you're going to carry these shards and you turn them in to get rewards. So it's it's more than it's objective based PVP. So it's more than just oh hey, we're just going to like go up to this place, enter the arena and just fight. You actually have an objective here, so really if you can just dodge like fighting and stuff and turn those in to get those crystals. Like that's that's kind of cool. Objective based PVP in this game I think is is a good idea. I like that. Um cuz yeah, cuz see then you can turn it into you get a bunch of these shards you can turn in and you receive it. So it's like a, what's it say? A vendor. So this specialized vendor is going to give you, I'm, I'm assuming it's better quality weapons and items. That seems really cool. Uh, so it's 122 with nine. Uh, wait, what? Is 122 with nightmare versions or is it 62 with nightmare versions? I, I'm not sure, Daniel. It, does, it seems like it, you just empower it. You said we already know about dungeon aspects. Yep. 
But actually, as they said, it's now a chance to drop. Oh, so it's a chance as opposed to 100%. Okay, so that's the only difference. Okay, if that's the case, then then that makes you that makes you have to actually keep farming the dungeons as opposed to like how we did it in the beta where we just did a dungeon, we automatically got the aspect, and then we're just we're like never going to that dungeon again. Which I think, guys, is still going to be the case. You know what I mean? It's still going to be the case, I think, when it comes to doing dungeons, but it's still pretty cool. I like that there's affixes for dungeons. I really like there's that. Affixes that you can find. I like that there's these... affixes for dungeons that has other stuff happen to them, especially when you empower them to Nightmare. Mm. Excuse me. Because the Nightmare dungeons are going to be really cool. She mentioned you could drop items in PvP. Did they specify what exactly you could drop? Uh, I think you're not. Gonna, I don't think you're going to be able to drop crystals, Daniel. It's only going to be uh, uh, normal items. But holy crap, man! The 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 Paragon table is phenomenal. Like this is cool. This is far superior to Diablo three. Being able to go through and just really customize your character however you want is very very cool you can rotate this and just customize it however you want your character is just going to be so different so like i could just have like i could have a melee rogue and it's going to be so different than anybody else's melee rogue i think the the meta for stuff is going to be so different with the paragon tree it's just going to be so different because there's going to be these nodes that you're going to take that not everybody's going to need Wow. Vince, it depends if it's one-time use or not. If you die, people can take the crystals you farmed. Yep. Yeah, that's one thing in the PvP. Uh, they said, so you can farm all these crystals. And that's what I mean by objective-based PvP. So you're trying to farm these crystals and then just get out so you get them. But if somebody kills you, they get to take the crystals. So there's an objective to it as opposed to just like, hey, we're just going to, you know, like in WoW, for example. You go to the place where you're going to PvP in WoW and you just enter and you just fight. Like, sure, there's objectives in there, like, you know, a flag or something. But this is really cool because, like, farming crystals for, like, very good rewards is important. It's going to help drive PvP. I bet you this is going to be a a real good way once you get to, like, the, the mid to late game or, like, the late mid game to power up your character. Like, that's going to be cool. PvP, I think this is a big dub for PvP. Big dub. Access to the um, first world tier. Run. Now the Run. world tier. Let's go back. I want to talk about the world tier real quick. Of something to do. The well, to finish this capstone dungeon, they're going to gain access to so the first world tier. You complete a as you complete the world tier, it will open up the opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. So you have to so you have to complete the story first. So my question is, are you going to start on adventurer, or are you going to already have veteran available? If not, because this says world tier one, did that say world tier one? opportunity for you to go in okay so that's world tier one world tier. that involves unlock okay okay so there you go veteran world tier two so by looking at it chad this looks like you start off as an adventurer and you're going to start the game in adventurer you'll play through as an adventurer you have to complete the story then you have to complete that dungeon then it gives you access to do the world tier boss and then you defeat him defeat the boss and then you can go to the next one so then how do you, I get, and then it's more world tier bosses to go up here. Like, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know how I feel about not being able to play on veteran. Um, from the start, but I mean, cause what's the, the first, the adventurer is just it will normal, open up right? the opportunity for you to go into your next world. Yeah. There's no bonuses. <laughs> Sarcastic Taurus. Welcome. I think veteran will be open day one though. If veterans open, then yeah, you just start on veteran because the game's not hard enough to not play on this. If you're a new player, you play on adventurer, but if not, you play on veteran. But that's still cool. So you play on veteran, you get the that involves a you get the bonus exp and the more gold, and then enemies are more challenging. But once you complete the story, then you just straight go to nightmare. Oh man, that's really cool. I like that. I like that they're making you complete the story. Before you can go up to the next stage. At least initially. Because once you complete the story. Then you do the dungeon. Then you can go fight the world boss. And then go to Nightmare. 
then you have to fight another world boss to go to torment so that's pretty powerful cool. Powerful loot, new that's items, cool. and more advantages for your player to have a better op. That's really nice. Hey, I like this. This is a big dub. The world tier stuff's a big dub. I think PvP is going to be awesome. To create. I love how, like, uh, uh, so that's the last thing. So what's cool is in the open world parts of it, there's just going to be spots like with the world events where you're able to just, like, Lilith is going to be affecting these things. And you're going to be able to just kind of cleanse them. And I like how it changes it. Like, hey, the monsters are so overwhelming. Like, Lilith's presence is so overwhelming. We need you to, like, cleanse this and purify it. Like, that's cool. That is just so cool. So, I like this, man. I really I, it's want to create. First impressions oh, yeah, sure. of the so really just gonna be features are just absolutely amazing. Like, I think, I think being able to... Like, play the game in so many different avenues. It's going to be really fun. You're going to have dungeons. You're going to have these world events. You're going to have world bosses. You're going to have the Lilith Presence stuff. You're going to have PvPing. There's going to be a huge part of people that are just going to PvP. Like, I think it's just going to be super, super cool, guys. So, big shout out to Blizzard and stuff for the end game. This is, this is really cool. Uh, like the video, guys, if you have enjoyed it. Make sure to comment down below. What do you guys think about the end game stuff coming in Diablo 4? And uh, as always, man, stay gaming. Try to manage your Diablo 4 withdrawals. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.